Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create an image in Photoshop and then take it to Illustrator to create a wonderful vector texture from it. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. I'm going to show you how you can create a texture like the texture that we're seeing here in Photoshop and how you can bring it to Illustrator and turn it into a vector texture. Now one of the benefits of a vector texture is of course that it's going to scale with our object. So the bigger the object, the vector texture is going to scale nicely with it. Now I came up with this process because I was having a lot of trouble creating nice little organic textures like this and I was trying to do it with brushes and things and it really just wasn't going anywhere. So I worked out that it was actually easier to do it starting in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you how you can take just a regular image in Photoshop, a texture image in Photoshop and make it into a texture that you can then bring into Illustrator. So we're going to do that and bring it into Illustrator and see how we can mask an object with this texture. So what we're going to do is to actually create a star and fill it with a texture so that we can see through to the background image behind it. Now for the purposes of showing you what else is possible, I've also got a background here that also has a texture applied to it. So we're seeing through the star, through a sort of pale blue background, through to a darker background even behind that. And this is all textured using vector textures. So if you're ready, let's get started with creating our own vector texture using Photoshop and then Illustrator. To get started with this tutorial, you're going to need some sort of image to use. Now I use the images from Mayang's Free Textures. I'm going to give you the link in the video to use. And I've gone to the walls textures and I went and got this one which is called Relief Painted Gravel Wall. And I think it's down sort of towards the end. Here it is, Relief Painted Gravel Wall. And it's a five megapixel texture, so it's a pretty large file. So I just opened it and I've downloaded it. So I'm just going to show it in the folder so that I can drag and drop this into Photoshop here. So I've just dragged and dropped it in position. The Mayang Free Textures have got a little bit of a copyright information at the bottom of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is to remove that. So I'm just going to select the area to crop. I'm going to make sure I'm deleting cropped pixels and I'm going to go ahead and crop that away because that means that I'm not going to get text in my texture which is not what I want. Now what I like to do with my textures is to have a darker edge and a lighter middle. So before I begin here with this background layer selector, I'm just going to select the burn tool here and I'm going to make it set to shadows with a fairly low exposure, say something like about 20 to 30 percent and a nice big brush. And I'm just going to paint over this to darken the edges. Now I don't think I've got enough of an exposure there for this. So I'm just going to paint around the edges and probably just focusing a lot on one side of the image because by the time we're finished rotating this, this is going to be all the way around the edge. So just darken this edge. Now let's go back to working with the image itself. I've got my Layers Palette open. You can do that by selecting Window and then Layers and you will need your Layers Palette open. So I'm going to drag this background layer onto this new layer icon here because that creates a second copy of this background layer. And I want to rotate this so I'm going to choose Edit and then Transform and I want to rotate it 180 degrees. In other words, just flip it across and you can see the two layers here, both the same image, now it's flipped. I want to turn this into Screen Blend mode because this is going to lighten this image. And I'm going to take this layer, the topmost one, and drop it again onto the new layer icon. And this time I want to rotate it 90 degrees. So Edit, Transform, and let's just go 90 degrees. Now you can see it's a different size. So what we're going to do is press Control T for the Transform handles and then Control 0 just to size everything so we can see what we're doing. I just want to size this to the right size, just so it matches the area that we're working on. And then just click to commit to that. 
And then finally we're going to take this and drop it onto the new layer icon yet again. And this time we're going to flip this 180 degrees. Edit, Transform, 180 degrees. All of these are screen blend mode because we copied one that had the screen blend mode, then all the others are screen blend mode. So now we're light in the middle, dark on the outside edge. Let's go now and create a composite of these layers. So I'm just going to hold Control, Alt, Shift and E. That's Command, Option, Shift, E on the Mac. And when I do that, I create a composite layer, which is the result of all these four layers just sandwiched together on a layer by itself. I do that because in case I need these layers again for any reason, I've still got them and I haven't committed to them. Now I want to convert this to black and white using a threshold adjustment. So I'm going to choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Threshold. Now a threshold is a unique adjustment layer in that what it does is it converts pixels to black or white and nothing else. So I'm just going to wind this up until I start to get some texture through this image. And what I'm interested in is this preponderance of sort of white pixels. So I want to take this up quite high so that most of the image is going to black and I just have white, a few white pixels in the middle because this is going to give me this nice uneven texture. And so if I'm happy with that, I'm just going to click away from that adjustment layer. At this stage, I could flatten these visible layers, but I'm a little concerned that I've got a little bit too much in the way of white flex here. So if that happens to you, just click here to create a new layer and move it between these two layers, between the threshold layer and the actual image that we're working with. Set black to your paint color. Click on the brush tool and then go and pick a brush that is sort of like a dotty brush, something that is a little bit organic, not something that's really solid. For example, you wouldn't choose this one, but this is a pretty good brush. I'm going to size it so it's reasonably big to work with. And on this new layer, I'm just painting in black just around the edges, just to make the edges just a little bit more organic and so that I'm not going to see the very edge of this document. I'm not going to have sort of like a cut off area. And because this is a texture, we don't mind that the edges are a little bit uneven. We certainly, in fact, the whole purpose of this was to create something that would have uneven edges and wouldn't look like it had been created from a document. So let's just do that. I think that's pretty good now. So now I'm going to take all these three layers and flatten them. So I'm going to click on the topmost layer. Again, Control Alt Shift E, Command Option Shift E on the Mac. So this is now my texture and if I'm happy with that, I can take it with me now to Illustrator. To do this, I'm going to click on the layer and I'm going to choose Select All because that selects everything on this layer. And then I'm going to choose Edit and Copy. And that just copies it to the Windows clipboard. So now let's go to Illustrator. So in Illustrator, I'm going to choose File New and create a brand new document. And then I'm just going to paste in the texture that I've bought from Photoshop. And to do that, I'll just choose Edit and then Paste. And this is the texture. Now the texture is a lot bigger than the actual document that I'm working in. So very quickly and easily to size it down to the artboard, I'm going to click to make sure that the height and width are locked. I'm going to click in the width and I'm going to shift down arrow and that's just going to decrease the size of this document. Now I could also type the value in, but since I'm here, I'm just going to size it this way. And what I want to do is to size my texture to the size of my Illustrator document. Because it's a texture, it doesn't really matter that I'm stretching it a little bit. We won't see that in the final result. So there's our bitmap image now inside Illustrator. And what we need to do is to convert this from a bitmap into a vector. And we do that by tracing it. We're going to end up with white dots and a black background. If you're not happy with doing that and if you would prefer to invert the colors, you can invert colors inside Illustrator. And it's just worthwhile knowing how to do that. With the layer selected, I've got this object selected here. I'm just going to choose Edit, Edit Colors and then invert colors. And that makes 
what is black white and what's white black and so this is going to be our texture so now let's go and trace this so we'll end up with little black bits I'll click image trace and I'm warned it's going to take quite a while in fact it's going to go really quickly so I've now started the trace and I need to get my tracing dialog which is this option here I'm going to turn off preview because I want to make some settings and if I don't turn preview off every setting that I make it's going to try and trace it immediately so I want it to wait until I'm ready so I'm going to set noise to one because I want as much noise as I can because noise is texture and I want my corners to be more and I want my paths to be more and because I've had some experience with this I also want to increase my threshold a bit I know that increasing the threshold is going to give me some better results and now I'll click preview but if it doesn't work correctly for you the first time you can always make changes to this so you'll see that the change from the previous trace to this one is that we've got a lot more stuff here we've got a lot more fine detail and since fine detail is texture that's really good for us so it's now traced so I'm going to turn off the tracing dialog and I need to expand it so I'm going to click here to expand this and what that does is it expands it into all the component pieces now let's look and see if we turn this from black and white into a color I'm just going to with the fill selected here I'm just going to fill it with a color and you'll see that I filled everything so that is not happy at all but let's have a look at this group and let's see what's causing the problem and the problem is going to be at the very very end and what it is is the old background so this is the white area and it has been traced as well so all I do is just drag and drop it into the trash can and now I'm left with just the grain just the texture so I'm going to go back up and I'm going to select this entire layer and now I can just make it black so here we have the texture so this is what we're going to use to add texture to objects inside Illustrator so I'm going to do just that right now so again let's select all this texture and let's choose edit copy and now I'm just going to hide it because we don't need it anymore because it is on the Windows clipboard and now I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to add something to this new layer that I can now fill with a texture well first of all I'm going to make a background shape so I'm just going to make a rectangle the size of the artboard now and use a script to do this because it's a lot less fiddly if you want to learn how to download and install and use scripts in Illustrator look out for my video tutorial on scripting in Illustrator because it's really handy so I've now got a rectangle the size of the artboard and I'm going to fill it with a sort of well let's fill it with this blue color here now let's draw a shape so let's go and do a star so I'm just going to click hold alt so that I get this nice pointy star like this and just add it to the middle of my document and I'm going to fill it with this blue here and now what we're going to do is we're going to texture this star so that we're going to poke holes in it so that we can see this paler blue underneath and the way we do that is first of all to make sure that the star is selected and then we go into the appearance panel and this appearance panel and the layers panel and everything else in Illustrator is accessible by choosing window and here's appearance this is the one we're going to use and layers is this one here but it's appearance that we want to select so that we can use it so with our star selected this is the appearance details for the star and we want to click in this bottom opacity like there's three opacities here there's one for stroke one for fill and this is for the whole path and this is the one we want so I'll click on opacity and you'll see that there's a little icon here or a little button here called make mask so I'm going to click to make a mask and there's my mask don't worry that your star has disappeared 
I'm going to click in the mask because this is where I want to add my texture. So I have my mask selected and I'm going to choose Edit Paste. And this is the mask in place. Now everything's disappeared but we don't worry about that because I'm just going to click here again on Opacity because that gets it back again. Now I don't want to clip my shape to my texture so I'm just going to disable clip. I'm going to make sure that what I'm seeing here looks pretty good and my texture is pretty much over my star shape. Now if I wanted to I can come in and click on my texture here, click on my selection tool and then just size down my texture so that it actually covers up my star and it's closer to it. So if I want to make use of the lighter areas of texture around the edge, I'm just going to make sure that my texture is a little bit closer to the middle of the star and so that we've got lighter areas of texture around the very points. Now I may take that out just a little bit but you can see that we can actually adjust how the texture looks on the star. At any time we can go back to this opacity selector and reselect these objects just to make sure that everything's working as expected. However, before we go back to the document, it's really critical that we click on the star because if we don't do that, you can see that the layers are showing the opacity mask and we won't be able to get back to our image. So we have to click on the star to stop editing our opacity mask and to go back to editing the image. And when I do that, you can see that the background is now visible through the star. So what we've done is we've taken the image that we had in Photoshop, we've brought it into Illustrator and we've vectorized it and then we've applied it as a mask to a shape and the effect of that is that we're seeing through this shape where the texture is to the layer or the shape underneath and the shape underneath is of course this big pale blue filled rectangle or square. Now if I change the color of the shape underneath you can see that the color that's coming through this star is changing too and that's proving to us that this texture vector mask is actually poking a hole in the shape. So there's how you can create your own vector textures in Illustrator. If this were me, what I would do is I would turn off all of this and I would just keep this texture and I would be saving that as a vector texture so that I could just open this file anytime I wanted to use a vector texture. And if I had a few of them that I created, then I'd just build them up as various layers in this document so I would have a range of textures to choose from. And then I won't have to go through the process of creating it in the first place. It'll just be there for me to use anytime I want to. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.